I don't know. It was on the lineup. Cause I didn't put could, on there. Because our next guest couldn't get into Michigan? Probably. Oh, probably right. Like the only thing. Yeah, but I, at least since I've been here, I mean, this year uh, or this season, I think this is the first time we've had Matt McConnell on the program, the voice of the Yotes, for the 23 24 season. Is that accurate? That Mr. would be accurate. Booker? Yeah, absolutely. What's the deal, Matt? What did we do wrong? What, what, what's our problem? What, what do you guys, I mean, I played the Michigan State song for you just because, you know, I miss you. What's going on here, buddy? Well, first of all, that that's a wonderful song, and I appreciate it. And by the way, just remember, kids go to Michigan State to play in big-time games, and the kids go to Michigan for the opportunity to play against Michigan State. So let's keep that straight, okay? <laughs> Well, it, it, and I don't think I could have gotten into Michigan. I had a two point four. I had a two point nine in high school. <laughs> I mean, there's no chance. You know who got in though? Heater Bob Heathouse got in. Oh, really? He got in. He was, wow. he was a big Wolverine fan before he saw the light. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, it's trade deadline. <laughs> it's the eve. It's the eve. I should say. Uh, Troy Stetcher is out and a seventh round pick, and to Edmonton for a fourth round pick in 2027. Do you expect some more, or have there been some more that we haven't seen yet been reported? Well, I guess you guys didn't get the word, but I got a, a call from your station, station manager about 10 minutes ago. You guys have been traded to Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> no! I, don't know you... I, I can't think of a worse yeah. I can't think of a worse place to go in the <laughs> NHL than Winnipeg. <laughs> the challenges we've had with Winnipeg and the media there and the fan base when all that crap was going on many, many years ago, as you know very well. well I could, You couldn't. No, wait. I can't go. No. So, so man, am, am I going to the Blue Bombers? I'm going to the Blue Bombers, and Rock's going to the, the Jets? Is that what's going on here? I mean, the would it play? Yeah, that's what I they, – they, they, they tried to get a seventh or an eighth round pick, but they couldn't get anything for each of them. So maybe they got plane tickets or something. I'm not sure. But, no, you know, it's, 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 a, it's always a weird time, right? It's, it's always – you know, you show up at the rink like this morning. You know, I'm out there at the ice den, and you know the whole the whole contingency of the media is out there, and and um, you know you're counting players on the ice to make <laughs> sure that everybody's out there, and you're wondering what's going to happen. And um, you know, I, I don't think it's their last move. Uh, Troy Stetcher, I think, was a, a a good depth defenseman for this group, but they were able to, you know, Bill was able to get a fourth rounder, and you know, he gave up a seventh. Uh, in the deal as well, but I don't give two hoots about the seventh round pick because mm -hmm. the chances are a guy in the seventh round is never going to make it, right? So, so he did that to maybe get a fourth instead of a fifth, I would think, and and he continues to accumulate assets. Um, you know, you got to look at the other guys. Uh, Jason Zucker, unrestricted free agent, he's not going to play tonight, trade related reasons, and it's fifty fifty on whether or not they're going to let Matt Dumba play tonight. So. Um, you look to the unrestricted guys first because if you don't unload those guys come, you know, July 1st, you get nothing for them, right? They, they walk and they, they can sign elsewhere. So I, I think they, I think they're going to continue to build assets. They're going to try to make deals when they make sense. And there's probably going to be a few more if, uh, if history serves us. Hey, Matt, so if, with Zucker being out, they, they, they kept him out of the lineup, obviously against Chicago as well. Uh, is he maybe your best, if you want to use it this way, your best price point uh, in acquiring a top uh, player or uh, or getting a, a a top pick somewhere in in the draft? Not you're not getting a, a seventh rounder for Zucker. <laughs> yeah, you know that that's that's interesting because I'm I'm curious to see if they're going to just go draft picks and continue to build the war chest, so to speak. Or if they're going to maybe try to bring in players that um, that they think can help the lineup, or that can help, you know, down the road. And and I say that because if you look at some of the moves that Bill Armstrong has made over the last year or two, uh, there I, I think there's been a point of emphasis to try to acquire players in that age range of like, you know, 24 to 26. They you know, they did it with Jack McBain. They did it with, with a few other players. They, they've got a lot of young kids, and they they have some veterans as well. But I think that, that middle age group is, is an area where they want to continue to build. If, if you look at what Bill's done in terms of all the draft picks, he, he's trying to create like a draft pick ladder, right? So he's got 21st, 2nd, and 3rd round picks in the next three years. 
and he, and he continues to try to do that. Like the, the deal today with um, the deal today with Stetcher, that's a fourth round pick, but not until 2027. So he's already looking out. He he, he wants to work out into the future and continue to create that ladder. Um, but, you know, from a personal standpoint, kind of a selfish standpoint, it'd be kind of fun to, you know, see if they could acquire a couple of younger players, too, and, and bring them in and see what they can do. But, um, yeah, they're working the phones. I hope Bill's got unlimited cell minutes. because I, I hope everybody's <laughs> got unlimited cell minutes because, because that's all they're doing. They got the, they got the, you see them around the rink, that's, that's all they're doing. They got their, their phones surgically attached to their ears. Man, don't you think there's got to be some kind of happy medium? I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like we do. It's like the Groundhog Day over and over. Um, people say it's six and one half dozen the other. What they're trying to do right now? Well, I think six and one half's out the door. I mean, for the fans, can't we have to get some kind of free agency to kind of blend it? To which I just completely in the tank. Now, now I mean, the team per se. That's such a downtrodden scenario for the next three or four years until things come together. Yeah, I, and I think they've done that a little bit, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, they, they brought back Nick Bugstad and they signed him to a two-year deal. They they brought in Alex Kerfoot, and he wasn't, you know, strictly a, a guy that would be flipped at the deadline, at least we don't think, right, because he, he signed a two-year deal. So, um, yeah, it, it, there, there's something about that. But I also think that this is a group that realizes that for long-term success, you got to build through the draft. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard to – you know, talk picks, 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 and then those picks usually, you know, over the course of their development take three to four years to make it to the NHL. I think fans just have to be patient, and um, and they certainly have been patient, but but at the same time, um, you know, I think that, that middle-aged core is, is, is where they're trying to build out, and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if, you know, if you look at some of the picks that have paid off already, I, I think the Dylan Gunther kid is going to be as good as any draft pick that we've had in quite some time. I think Logan Cooley has made some really, really good strides, uh, mainly on the defensive side of, of things. We, we know what he can do offensively. He's going to be a really good player, and I think Clayton Keller will continue to grow and bloom. So um, that's, you know, in, in drafts, if you get one player, it's average. So one player that makes it. If you get a couple of players out of a draft, that's a really good draft. And I'm talking about players that go on and, and make an impact. And if you get more than two, you get three or more, that's almost unheard of. And they've actually done that a couple of times over the last five to seven years. So, um, you know, hopefully they'll continue on it and, you know, and, and they'll continue to build the, uh, the program and continue along the process. Man, and, and on the ice, this team was right there in the playoff hunt. We were all excited. We were like, wow, this team is like right there. I think on <laughs> just barely on the outside looking in and like, here we go. But then would they lose 18 out of 21, 14 in a row before they won two in a row? What what happened during that, that time with that team being on the run and then just kind of falling off the cliff, so to speak? Yeah, they, you know, in the first half, they had all sorts of confidence, didn't they? And, and, and I think one of the turning points was when Connor Ingram got hurt and missed a couple of weeks. I, I don't think that helped. Uh, Karel Vanelka was trying to get his game going, and, and it looks like it's back. He, he's going to play tonight against Minnesota. Uh, but I also think too that um, you know when you when you when you look back at it, the schedule was probably the toughest that they've gone through. And, and I'm not making excuses because you know sooner or later you got to play all 82 games. So you know it, it, it but but it was a it was a string of games against you know all playoff teams and playoff teams that were pretty high at the time, you know, the likes of Carolina and uh, Winnipeg and uh, uh, Florida, who might be the best team. They, they might be, they might be the team to beat in the East. Uh, so, you know, so, so, you know, they, they've seen a lot of pretty good teams. And then, and then through any, any slump, you, you just got to try to build out of it, right? You have good stretches, but they couldn't catch a break. They couldn't get the timely save when they needed it. And then they finally broke through late in the road trip and, um, and, and then they came home the other night and just completely laid an egg first game back after a long trip in that. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they do over the next couple of nights. Minnesota loves to throw everything at the net. They're very, very good on their transition. You know, the Coyotes are going to have to be ready for that. And then tomorrow night you've got a really good uh, re reinvigorated Detroit team coming in here. So uh, I, I think the next 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, will tell us a lot about 
how this team is going to adapt down the stretch. So I, I have this drinking game that I do uh, when you're watching you guys, and One. you know it's all about what oh, co- no. what other, it's, it's not you though. It's like whatever jacket color that Tyson Nash is wearing. So you have any <laughs> you have any insight on what he may be wearing tonight that I could kind of bet my buddy, you know, what it will be, so I can save myself a couple beers. You know, the, the sport coat, the red one that looks like a, a, a sofa, <laughs> like, yeah, you hardly worn that this year, but the thing is, is I, I can't get past, I can't get past the short hair. I know it's like, oh, it's... We, we're going on three years, right? And, and, and then he, you know, we were talking to him this morning and he, he had gone with the, he had gone from the mustache and the goatee and he, he you know, he's going back to that look and then he realized how gray it was. And he ran out of mascara to cover the gray <laughs> right, and make it black. Um, so, so I, you know, I don't know what's going on there. Like he's, he's uh, a mess right now. I know. I, it's like every day. It's like, man, what are you doing? I mean, it, it, he's changing his look all the time. But now, hey, you know, and all honestly and sincerity, I love watching you guys. You are entertaining for a team that's really struggled. You make it least worth watching every night. So keep up great work. Thanks for coming on with us today. We always appreciate it. Oh, anytime. And I'll tell you what I tell everybody. It's the greatest job in the world if you've never had the ability to play the game. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Manu- Manuch can understand that. <laughs> yeah. nah, see you, Matt. Appreciate it. That's Matt McConnell, the voice, the play-by-play voice for your uh, Arizona Coyotes. Follow him on Twitter and X, Matty Coyotes TV, as tonight it is the Minnesota Wild. This is uh, the second of three straight games at Mullet Arena. These two teams, they split. Uh, so far this season, and they got one more on the road still, so they'll play four times. But uh, good stuff there. Coming up, it's football at 50. We got an update on the Chiefs fan that uh, got frostbit. 